uh, let's look at now some protocols uh, that provide this quality of service in the engine architecture uh, the real time protocol being at the forefront uh, it's not essentially a protocol it's a family of protocols that includes uh, real time protocol itself real time control protocol and real time streaming protocol so uh, first and foremost uh, any voice service would require certain uh, signaling support this uh, signaling support actually has to be done uh, through through the network in in our case in ngn the signaling is carried out by sip uh, and the uh, and the diameter sip is included in the ip multimedia subsystem the ims which is part of the ngn architecture the data transfer is carried out through um, rtp uh, rtp as an alternative to udp and tcp is because voice needs some special uh, um, um, treatment and uh, voice needs some additional signaling that signaling is not exactly related to the establishment of connection but it is between the two uh, end to end uh, users or the two parties so all the coding related functionalities including encoding decoding etc are carried out by the rtp family uh, so rtp essentially provides the end to end transport uh, functionality uh, and it since it is an end to end phenomenon it is available at the end host uh, the primary responsibility of rtp is to provide qos related guarantees that means uh, what are the requirements or the service level agreement uh, between the service provider and the end user in terms of qos and how those have to be achieved so it means some kind of provisioning feedback monitoring and tweaking that is modification is is something that is going to be part of the rtp so qs guarantees and reservations are going to be part of functionality rtp is actually the real time protocol that establishes a connection uh, for the data uh, that is the voice in this case but in order to look at the statistics um there is another protocol real time control protocol again it works between the two endpoints uh, it it keeps track of the statistics which relate to the transmission uh, which relate to the quality of service and in case multiple streams uh, have to be uh, synchronized or uh, um, overlaid on top of each other then the real time control protocol manages those as well uh, this is the rtp packet format it is not a very big concern to look at the rtp packet format as the final one because uh, different applications may even go for some slight modification to the rtp packet itself let's look at the fields like we have the version uh, we have the csrc count we have certain flags like p x m we have the type of the payload etc then we have the sequence number and time stamping and the sources synchronization source and the contributing source let's look at the fields now so the version is obviously uh, what defines uh, which particular uh, version uh, is uh, being used in in uh, these days we have the second version which uh, is being used uh, then if we are using uh, 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 padding which compensates for the incomplete uh, packet uh, that means that uh, it is not part of the payload it has to be notified from the sender end to the receiver end that this particular part of the uh, payload is not going to be considered as voice uh, then um, if there is a requirement to extend the header then some kind of extension uh, flag has to be enabled so if the extension flag is up it means that there is going to be an additional header exactly one in number between the rtp header and the payload uh, then we have the contributing sources uh, it is uh, all these uh, 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 senders whose audio or audio related information is mixed together so uh, up to uh, 15 contributors can can create uh, uh, the mixed audio and uh, the number of active users or active sources has to be 
identified. Then we have the marker. Marker actually contains uh, uh, an indication. If this particular flag is up, it means that uh, uh, the packet in which this flag is found to be up is the is is the boundary or is the uh, last frame uh, which is going to be part of the audio conversation. Then we have the payload type. The payload type is specifically dependent upon uh, the encoding scheme and the application which is eventually going to use it. Uh, then sequence number actually identifies uh, the ordering, uh, the sequencing and the time stamping related um, information. So sequence numbers actually identify uh, the packets between RTP, uh, sender and receiver. Uh, then we have the timestamp. Actually, this is the information that the sender has to send to the receiver because uh, each part of the audio conversation has to be uh, placed in a certain time sequence. So uh, this uh, uh, this particular field actually helps the receiver to play back the content at an appropriate uh, uh, time. Now this particular a time is a relative concept because uh, the sender and receiver may have clocks which are uh, uh, which have different times it means now the, uh, the 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 rate at which the timestamps are stamped in at the receiver side and played back on the uh, on the sender side and played back on the receiver side have to be derived from the clock now the clock is provided by the application it means the application has to make sure that any a physical clock time differential between the sender and receiver is compensated through the uh, 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 offset that the application has to take care of. But uh, essentially, the clocking information has to be such that it, it linearly increases and it is a non-decreasing function. So it means the time is going to be an increasing phenomenon. 